but who better than me? Welcome back to another episode of the Hardcore Casual with your boy, Base the Kid. As always, please like and subscribe, share with a friend, a colleague, a relative, associate, anyone in between. I appreciate all of it. Um, real quick one, because I've got a few other things I need to do, but I had to get one out. So without further ado, let's get into it. So to be honest, I wasn't going to address this because I didn't think it was worth addressing. But I mean, if all the reports are to be believed at the moment, uh, Conor Ben versus Chris Eubank Jr. is looking likely to happen around about the October time. Uh, reportedly, it's been agreed at a catch weight of 156 pounds, which is still essentially middleweight. So you've got Conor Ben coming up from welterweight, 147 pounds, all the way up to middleweight to fight Chris Eubank Jr. At a time when he's still on a quest, I guess, for welterweight glory and titles. Now, my first thoughts about this is Chris Eubank Jr.'s career at this point is a joke. I mean, Liam Smith literally just left Matchroom with the plans of going to middleweight to fight Chris Eubank Jr. Bearing in mind, he's still a smaller guy going up to middleweight, but now it's like you're foregoing that for Conor Ben, who's a division below that. After calling out Kel Brook, like it's, it's weird, like what, why you claim that you want titles, you want to be this champion, you want the Golovkins, you want, well, you there's Yanni Beck. Yanni Beck, for, with all intents and purposes, has got a belt still. Demetrius Andrade still has a belt because he hasn't relinquished that 160 title yet. You went over to PBC for Charlo, first sign of trouble, first sign of issues, came back to the UK. I, like, I really don't know what's going on. Like, that career is trash. But that being said, I'm gonna be a hypocrite because if that fight gets made, from what I've heard, it's gonna be at the O2. Oh yeah, I'll definitely buy tickets for it. That's a big event. That's one thing I will say, look, in the day, risk versus reward, this is a very high reward and I'm not going to say it's low risk because it's not but I doubt you're really going to get hurt in there. You might get outboxed. There is a chance you could get outworked in that fight. But one thing I know about both of these guys, they both got very good gas tanks. And I know that Chris Eubank Jr. probably doesn't hit hard enough to really damage and hurt Connor Ben like on a sustained level but you're definitely going to hit hard enough that it's going to you know it will deter Connor Ben from doing his usual sort of you know bum rush style that he sort of likes to implement at times um, look like I said if it happens I'm going to be there but I can't condone and act as if Chris Eubank Jr's career isn't trash at this point like he's legit it's, I mean, look, in a slightly, I mean, you could almost say in one sense, he's he's on that Tommy Fury trajectory. He's on the Jake Paul trajectory. It's, like he's, it's, it's almost like he's not even a, a full-time proper boxer anymore. He doesn't seem to be fighting for anything relevant. He's literally he's just trying to find the path of least resistance to the most amount of money. And... Yeah, you know what? I'm going to leave that one there. I'll, I'll wait until that gets finalised before I go in any further. But yeah, it's... Mm, nah, we can't... We can't really be letting man slide no more. You just can't do it, I'm afraid. So, yeah. Massive L. Okay, so... Looks like Floyd Mayweather came out essentially and said something along the lines of Well, top rank have got both Devin Haney and Shakur Stevenson. So, they need to fight each other rather than worrying about what Tank's doing. Let Tank do what he's doing and let them two fight each other. All the belts are on that side. Now, to a degree, I understand that, but unfortunately, let's be realistic here. Like, Shakur Stevenson, as good as he is, is not at 135 right you now. He's at 130. Tank Davis is at 135. Devin Haney's at 135. Now, 
if Shakur wants to come up for the purpose of only fighting Tank currently, okay, then yeah, I guess going for Undisputed does make a lot more sense. But why are you f trying to find alternative opponents for your guy's opponents to fight rather than having your guy fight them? Like, is he not supposed to be the best guy to cash cow, like, on the pound for pound list in some people's rankings and all of that? Well, if that's the case, fight the people, in it. Like, no more Isaac Cruises, no more Mario Barrios and, and Roly Romero's, like, fight some credible people. You're not, a, you're not a young youth anymore. Like, 27 going on 28, it's long. Um, and Floyd should know better, he should be doing better, because in his career, in that part of his career, he took on any and all comers. He took on the best of the best. Um, whatever you want to say about the money era, and whether he, you know, chose people strategically at that point, and even at that point, he was still fighting some of the creme de la creme opponents. Um, but he wasn't doing what he's got Tank doing. So him and Ella B need to sort that one out because it's long at this point. Uh, I'm not going to spend too much time on that, but yeah, not a great look. So touching on a little bit more about Derek Chisora, um, he seems quite adamant that he wants to fight Deontay Wilder. Um, he said that look he's got this whole theme he wants to do it in America he's got this coming to America theme that, he's, that he wants to implement you know what I've said from time I actually don't mind the fight I'd quite like to see it um, I do believe that I mean two years ago uh, prior to the second Joseph Parker fight I definitely believed that he could give Wilder some really bad work be in no trouble of really like you know having any sustained damage or any bruising uh, situation I clearly thought he he had enough and potentially just due to work rate and maybe Wilder's gas tank being is kind of trash that he might just be able to outwork him but he slowed down significantly now to the point that he's good for a few rounds two three rounds maybe say five rounds at max I mean at sort of peak performance and after that it's literally just a war of attrition um, yeah he'll be in there throwing but he'll just be getting slower and slower and likely he would get taken out with the right hand at some point but it would be a fun fight while it lasted so on this occasion I'm with Derek look if he wants to fight do whatever you can do to, to make that fight because he has deserved this one uh, it's the fight he wants, he's not shying away from it. So, yeah, if it can be made, make it. Whatever you gotta do, any, like, whatever money you gotta pay, or if PBC are happy to put that one on and you have no involvement in it, and if that's what's gotta happen for it to get done, let it get done. Like, he, if he wants to go out on this one, let him go out on his own terms, in it. Simple. Speaking of Deontay Wilder, the rumor is that he's gonna be coming back around October time against. Um, Robert Hellenius. Now to be honest I think this was something most people thought would be his comeback fight when it did uh, if he did come back just because Robert Hellenius you know beat up uh, Adam Kofnowski a couple times and Kofnowski was always touted to be one of uh, Wilder's next opponents in his title ring uh, back in the day prior to obviously the, the big Tyson Fury stuff so I'm not surprised by it. Um, I think Hellenius is a bit too slow for Wilder at this point. Uh, he's not as dangerous as he used to be, not as fleet-footed, but he does still have very good fundamentals. He's a lot more seasoned now in terms of his experience, and he's still got a devastating right hand equal to Wilder's, and it probably would be the hardest puncher that Wilder's ever been in the ring with. And we've seen what kind of happened with uh, Tyson Fury. So if there's any lingering effects from that, could be an interesting could be an interesting one but ultimately um it's a good comeback fight and i would definitely expect him to um to ko Hellenius quite viciously as well especially if he's got anything left so i'm still yet to watch the uh, mark mcsile versus ray vargas fight so i'm hoping i'm going to get that done on friday but it also looks like I'm going to have to watch the kazuto ryoko versus donanietes rematch as um Kazuto Ryoko from RC got a decision victory. Um, haven't watched it, don't know if it was a split, unanimous or whatever, but he was one of my favorite guys down in sort of that super flyweight division, so congrats on him. I did say on the breakdown with Tony that I did think he would have enough for him and he would sort of get the decision victory against Donny Nietes just because Nietes has been in a few more wars, uh, you know, considerably more fights between him. Um, 
so yeah congrats to him um i'll sort of give my thoughts on that maybe in a later video but he does need to mix it up with the rest of these champions like you know martinez he needs to fight rodriguez he needs to fight estrada chocolatito like he needs to get in that mix can't keep dining out in japan on the one wbo belt like come on we, we need some more unifications down down in the super flyweight one of the best divisions we have to get consolidated you know what so i'm gonna end this video talking about the Jake Paul and Hasim Rachman Jr. press conference. Now, I have thoroughly enjoyed this press conference, I'm not gonna lie. Um, I was half expecting um, Hasim Rachman Sr. to maybe get a bit aggy when Jake Paul started interrupting him when he was talking. Um, you know, Jake was looking, he, he was acting like, you know, well, you're not your son, sir. And rah, 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 rah. But I was just like, okay, if this guy decides to get up and teach you a lesson, like <laughs> whether he's in his 40s, his 50s, his 60s, like <laughs> you haven't got a chance at this point. So maybe like save all the trash talk for the youth and leave and leave the dad alone. But um, I look, I give Jake all kinds of credit for this fight. Like everyone talking about oh, um, Hasim Ratman Jr. is not that good or whatever, doesn't matter, still a boxer. A pro boxer, the one thing we've been talking, uh, everyone's saying, oh, I want Jake to fight a boxer. He hasn't fought no boxers, MMA guys, basketball players, whatever. Well, this guy is a legit boxer. 100 plus amateur fights, 13 professional fights, 12 and 1. Lost his last fight against someone that was 20 and 0. And he was 12 and 0. Uh, and he was also the son of another legend in boxing. So all of that to put together, plus the fact that the guy is a natural smaller one but a natural heavyweight in his last fight it was like 224 pounds so realistically i guess he could campaign in the bridge weight category um because that's the limit there but he's coming down to 200 pounds there's a rehydration clause so he can't weigh more than 210 the morning of the fight i think it is and then i guess whatever he weighs after that he weighs after that um so look he's got all of that behind him there was talks about oh, he wanted more money but i think in the press conference he was pretty much the same look at the end of the day like i'm the highest risk here and i'm getting paid the least like why is that but that makes sense to me because you you're not going to give big money to the to the guy that's going to be the most riskiest opponent to you like if you're taking on that risk and potentially about to lose that oh you don't want to pay the guy well as well so i kind of get it but it's a bit of a piss take to him um that being said though yeah it was a fiery press conference i was interested in the fight anyway i'm even more interested in it now and it's what it's only about three weeks away uh sixth of august so yeah i mean overall uh bring that one on and i <laughs> Look, Jake deserves all the credit in the world. Again, another Capricorn, so you know how you know how I feel about uh, about them guys. He's got that heart, he's got that grip, but this one might be a step too far. Like I said, naturally bigger guy because Jake's always been the weight bully, but this time he's fighting someone naturally bigger. Yeah, he's bringing him down. Don't know about punch power, but mm, it could be it could be an issue. So. Wait for those official predictions later on. But um, yeah, this one, I like this. I'm intrigued by this one. I'm definitely waiting to see what's going to happen. All right, everyone, thanks for watching. I'm going to leave it there. Um, hopefully the new stand will be soon, but probably won't be to the end of the month now. Um, but you know, I don't actually mind doing this. It's a bit less editing this way. Um, only issue is I guess sometimes lighting's a bit funny. And also after gym day, shoulder might be hurting having to hold <laughs> hold the camera. But you know what? We move in it. Um, but no, as always, thank you for watching. Uh, thank you to all the new subscribers. I'm over those milestones. I'm looking to continue building um, more content, better content coming in the near future. Uh, I'll talk about things like fem files and why that hasn't been around for a while. But yeah, we'll, um, we'll address all that later on. But for now, Hardcore Casual, out.